uh, in New Hampshire. We've been here all day, first time since I've been a declared candidate for president. And I think somebody like Biden, who's trying to do away with the first in the nation primary status uh, for New Hampshire, he's doing that for his own interests. That's not the interest of our republic. Uh, and I think this is a tradition that's worked very well. So I'm happy to be participating in this, and I'm glad the Republicans are going to keep it on the calendar. Look, we know the country's going in the wrong direction. We can see it. We can feel it. Uh, we're not happy with an open border where millions of illegals are pouring in. We're not happy with an economy that's made it more difficult for working people just to make ends meet. Uh, we're not happy with an administration that's trying to kneecap our ability to produce our own energy. Uh, we are not happy with a weaponized bureaucracy that seems to go after people it doesn't like. If Hunter were a Republican, he would have been in jail by now, and we all know that's the case. We're not happy to see crime overwhelming American cities and hollowing out once vibrant uh, localities. We are not happy when we see the woke ideology infecting so many institutions in our society. We are not happy that the federal government attempted to impose a biomedical security state on this country during COVID and probably would have succeeded if it wasn't for states like Florida saying no. And we are still very much uh, saddened, especially coming off this past weekend of remembrance, saddened by the fact that we lost 13 service members in Afghanistan due to the reckless incompetence of President Joe Biden. That is not good and it is not acceptable. And so we see all these things. We also see a political elite in Washington, D.C. that looks out for its interests, not your interests. It's pursuing an agenda, not that will represent us, it's pursuing their agenda to try to impose it on us. If you look right now, five of the seven wealthiest counties in this country are suburbs of Washington, D.C. How could that possibly be? Washington, D.C. isn't producing anything except mountains of debt and a lot of hot air. It's that way because people who are politically connected in this country have an advantage and you have an elite class and you have everybody else out here working hard and it's almost like when you work hard and do the right thing the government makes wants to make it more difficult for you uh, and that is wrong and look uh, it was mentioned uh, when Jason's introduction you know I'm a blue-collar kid uh, my mother was a nurse my father worked for uh, the television rating company Nielsen back then to get the ratings, you actually had to install a device on the family's TV sets and their cable boxes. Uh, and so that's what he did. Um, his father was a steel worker in Pittsburgh. And so I was always taught, you're entitled to nothing. Uh, you have to work for everything. And so you better get working if you want to get ahead. And I just believe that in America, if you work hard and you make the most of your God-given talent, you are going to succeed because that's what this country was founded on. So I started working minimum wage jobs when I was a teenager. Uh, my first job, full-time job, I had graduated high school and most kids have fun over the summer before uh, they go off to college or whatever. I went to work as I'm there at 6 a.m. working for an electrical company as an assistant to an electrician. And I actually learned something about government on that because I showed up to work the first day and I got sent home. And I was like, I didn't even do anything. And you're already sending me home. They said, you know, we looked at your work boots and we couldn't determine whether or not they are OSHA approved. So you must go buy boots that are OSHA approved. And these were old boots, I think, that had been in the family. They were fine. They were safe. So I had to spend my first week's salary on buying new boots. And so I thought to myself, you know, I, I don't think it made me any safer, but it did make me a little bit poorer that this regulation was in effect. So it just shows you how government operates. Uh, but we worked and we always believed that that would be something that would be very, very important. And uh, I ended up putting myself in a position to be able to do things and, you know, talk about military and all this other stuff. Um, but I would not be here today as the governor of the third largest state in this country the 13th largest economy in a world if we were our separate country and a candidate for president if I didn't believe that in America hard work pays off. Um, and if we, 
if we lose that in this country, uh, we are going to lose a, a great heritage. And so I look at the direction of our country, but I think this. American decline is not inevitable. American decline is a choice that we will make, particularly over these next 18 months. Uh, success is attainable, and freedom is worth fighting for. Uh, and I'm running for president because I think we have it within our power to reverse the decline and restore this country to the level of greatness that we all deserve.